Designing product labels can feel overwhelming. With so many design tools to pick from, it's easy to get stuck just thinking about where to start. But here's the good news. Creating stunning product labels for your business isn't as complicated as it seems. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my entire process of designing an eye-catching label using linearity. From brainstorming to crafting custom design elements, I'll cover it all. Let's get started. Now to achieve impactful and successful designs, it's important to start with a solid plan for your ideas. I'd like to break my process down into three key steps. Step one, identify your target audience. Start by understanding who your target audience is. Step two, research their preferences. Take the time to research the types of products and trends that resonate with your target audience. Step three, start sketching your layouts. Put pen to paper and map out a clear path to your final design. Sketching out a rough design will give you a clear path to the finish line. If you follow these steps, you'll find that your design process becomes more enjoyable, organized, and effective. Now with steps one and two completed, I can move on to sketching my layout. For the front, I know I want my logo at the very top. On both sides, I want some star and circle elements to bring more attention to the brand. Right under that, I'll have my product name front and center. And just below that, I'll add in some additional product information. Then to the left and right, I'll add in some organic looking fruits to frame the information I have on the front. Next to the left side of the label, I'll add in a solid back background to frame and hold the information and elements. I'll add in my logo once again at the top. Then under that, I'll add in my product description, followed by a divider line to help break things up. And under that, I'll add in some additional information. And just underneath that, I'll add in another divider line. Under that, I'll add three circles that will hold some icons to support the above information. To the right, I'll add in another solid background frame. And at the top, I'll add in my description copy. Right below that will be some copy about how to use the product. I'll break it up again with another divider line, followed by some product information. I'll add in another divider line followed by one last section for company information. Now that looks and feels good and this should give us a great starting point. With a clear path forward, we can open Linearity. If you're new to Linearity, get ready to be blown away. With design tools like templates, AI auto trace, integrations, and the ability to refine your designs like a pro, you're set for success. If you don't have an account, you can create one for free at the link in the description down below. Now here on the home screen, I can quickly access my most recent projects. Check out some guides and tutorials and even try out some new product features here at the top. For now, I just want to start a new project, so I'll select new document. From here, I have access to a whole bunch of preset project sizes, but I have a custom size I've already determined, so I'll come to the bottom and enter my dimensions. Now, depending on where you are in the world, your unit of measurements will change. Be sure to change that by selecting this drop down and picking your unit of measurement. Here in the United States, we use feet, inches, and sometimes football fields. Though I don't see football fields as an option, so I'll go with inches. I'll make my canvas size 8.25 by 3 inches, and then I'll hit create. With our project created, we can start throwing stuff onto the canvas. But before we do, let me give you a high level overview of what you see on screen. In the center, we have our custom canvas we just created. To the left of that, we have our toolbar with everything we need to design. As we progress, we'll explore those tools more. On the left, we have our layers panel. At the top, there's a mix of design tools to mask out different design elements, crop, and export. Lastly, to the right, we have a panel that will have additional parameters to adjust specific elements when selected. Next, I'll start by adding a basic rectangle the size of my canvas. I'll come to my toolbar and select the rectangle tool. You'll see some additional shapes pop up, but I'll go over the rectangle for now. I'll then click and drag on my canvas. From here, I'll select any of the handles and drag it until it fills up my canvas. Next, I'll change the color by coming to the right and selecting fill. From here, you can select the color by using the color picker, a hex code, or pick one of the preset color packs. In this case, I use a custom hex code by adding it here. Lastly, I'll name my layer to keep things organized and easy to find in case changes need to be made down the line. If you get nothing else from this video, please remember to name your layers. It makes it easier for you or others to access your working files. Next, I'll add in my company logo. To upload a file into your project, just locate it on your device and drag it into your canvas. You can upload JPEGs, PNGs, and many other file types. With my logo in place, I'll add in my product copy here in the front. To add in some copy, I'll come to the toolbar and select the text tool. I'll then come to the canvas and type in my product name. Now I'll change my font by going to the text tool, clicking on font, and picking something that works well for my project. 
In this case, I'll go with Barlow, which is a free Google font. Next, I want to give my font some more breathing room, so I'll adjust the spacing between each character. To do that, I'll come to the letter spacing and change it to 4 points. That looks much better now. Now, I'll move on to the subcopy. I'll come to my text tool again, select the text tool, and repeat the same process we just covered. I'll then adjust the placement and reduce the font size to 12 points. Now I want to add in one last line of copy, but to expedite the process, I'll right click on this line of copy and hit copy. Then I'll right click on the canvas and hit paste. This will copy all the text parameters and all we have to do is move it into place and change the copy. Lastly, I'll add in my product fluid ounces here. So I'll copy in the previous line and paste it in. Then I'll change the font weight to medium. I'll adjust the placement and we're good to go. At this point, I'll circle back to my layers panel and rename the layers I missed along the way. Next, I'll add in some additional elements near the logo to draw more attention to the brand name and fill in some space. I'll create some little stars and some organic circle elements. To create the star, I'll come to my toolbar and select the shape tool. I'll then pick the circle element. Then I'll click on one of the handles to create a long oval. I'll copy that shape and paste it in, then rotate it 90 degrees. Next, I'll group both shapes for easy adjusting and editing by selecting the shape, holding the shift key, and selecting the other shape. I'll name the new group star and change the color to a lighter off-white. To do that, I'll come to the fill and use the eyedropper tool to select the color I want to pick up. Now, I'll pepper in the new star element based on my sketch. Now just to finish up, I'll add in some circle elements to help balance things out. Instead of using the basic circle, I want it to feel a little imperfect, so I'll select the brush tool. I'll adjust the brush parameters, turning down the smoothing to 70%, turning off the stroke, and turning on fill. Then I'll change the color and draw in my ball. Now I'll adjust the size of that new element, I'll create some copies, and I'll rename and organize them. Now I'll add in some organic blob elements on both the left and right side. For the sake of time, I won't create this from scratch, but you can find thousands of elements like this online. Another tip I've learned is to work smarter and faster. Can I create this element from scratch? Sure, but should I? No. I'll drag the element onto my canvas and move it into place. And lower the opacity to make it less distracting. To do that, I'll select the element and lower the alpha to 30%. That looks great. Now I'll mask out the rest of the organic blob to keep things looking nice and organized. I'll create a rectangle as my mask layer, but any shape can work for your mask. I'll come to the toolbar and select the rectangle and drag it over the parts I want masked. I'll then drag that layer behind the organic blob element in the layer panel. Next, I'll select both layers by selecting the mask and holding down shift while selecting the two elements. All that's left is right clicking and selecting on mask. Now I'll copy that element and I'll flip it horizontally. Next, I'll add in my two sections for the product information. I'll come to the toolbar and select the square tool, clicking and dragging until I'm happy. I'll then round out the corners by adjusting the shape parameter to 14%.
I will then change the color by coming to the fill and using the eyedropper to sample a color. I will then copy this element and paste it on the right side of my label and of course rename my layers. Now for the fun stuff, let's add in some fruit. I will upload a reference photo and I will lower the opacity. Then I'll come to the toolbar and select the pen tool. I'll start plotting points and as I plot, I can see where the curve will be. Now learning the pen tool will take some practice, but just make sure to take your time and keep on trying. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'll make two copies and I'll change the color like we've done in the past. Now I'll add in my seeds by selecting the circle tool. Dragging it out until I'm satisfied with the shape and changing the color to orange. I'll copy that two more times and adjust the placement. I'll be sure to name the layers, organize them, and group them. Now I'll adjust until I have everything in a good place. Now let's add an orange. I'll come to the toolbar and select the pen tool again and freehand an orange for a loose organic feel. That looks great. I'll add in some reflections onto the orange by adding some ovals. And do the same for the orange leaves. Lastly, I'll adjust the size and rotation, copy another orange slice, and adjust its placement. I'll select all three, group them, and name the layer. I'll add in a rectangle to create a mask like we did before. Then I'll create a copy, paste it, and flip it horizontally. This is really coming together nicely. All that's left is to add in some copy and icons on the left and right side, and we can call this label done. I'll grab my logo and style element created on the front by copying them over and reducing the size. I'll also copy a star and paste it over to the left side, changing the color to pink and doing the same for the little circle elements. Next, I'll add in a product description by selecting the text tool, clicking to create a text box and adding my copy while adjusting the font and the color like we've done previously. Now I want to add some sort of divider line. I'll use the pen tool to create a thin line. I'll turn off the fill and turn on the stroke, reducing the stroke width to one point and adjusting the color. Now I'll create another line of copy by copying the previous text box to retain the text styling. I'll adjust the placement and add my copy. And you guessed it, I'll copy another divider line. For the three icons, I'll create a simple circle changing the fill to orange. Then I'll add descriptive copy down below. 
To expedite the process, I'll copy the circle and text two more times. And here's a great feature of Linearity, a robust library of icons. I'll select the library from the top toolbar and search for my desired icon. I want a water droplet, so I'll search water. I'll select an icon I like and adjust its size before changing its stroke width to one point and color to off-white. I'll repeat this for the other two icons. Now everything is looking great. To keep it organized, I'll group, rename, and organize my layers. With the left side completed, we're on the home stretch. Now for the right side, I'll upload a pre-made ad set, adjust the size and position, and copy over the little stars and circles to maintain consistency. I'll add directions by copying a previous text box to keep the font styling. I'll add in my copy, and then just below that, I'll add a divider line by copying the one above and adjusting the placement. I'll copy the above text box again, adjusting the placement and adding a new copy. Then copying another divider line, and you get the process. And just like that, our label is done. But at this point, I'll take a step back and get some coffee. This allows me to spot little imperfections in spacing, alignment, and layout. I'll make little adjustments to ensure my label looks pixel perfect. And I'll be sure to review my copy for formatting and spelling issues like I have here, where I meant to type in shea butter, but instead I wrote she butter. Once done refining, I'll export my project for print by going to the top toolbar and selecting export, and selecting PDF, making sure to choose CMYK. You'll notice that selecting CMYK adjusts the colors for print. That's because RGB is usually out of the printing spectrum for inkjet and laser printers. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, we just created a product label from start to finish. We covered brainstorming, creating custom elements, the importance of refining, and how to export for print. If you found this video helpful and want to create your very own product label, be sure to sign up at the link in the description down below for discounted pricing. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.